This is the new Porsche Panamera. I say new, it's not entirely new. It's more of a midlife update. You see Porsche's tweaked the exterior and interior designs. They've reworked the suspension slightly and the steering, upgraded the engines. Sort of new then. Now it starts from 70,000 pounds, which is quite a lot, but this is the range topping Turbo S version and it's almost 140,000 pounds. Let's start this video off by talking through the design changes Porsche has made to the Panamera because they are subtle. The main one is a new front bumper which has larger intakes than before so it looks a bit more, more aggressive. You've also got some new light modules which are quite nice. Moving down the side there's some new alloy wheel designs. They start off at 19 inches which if you ask me is a little bit small for a car this large. Round the back the key change is this. Porsche has actually created this light bar out of one single element. Before it used to have a split in the middle where it was joined. They figured out how to make it just one piece. Well done guys. You've also got some new exhaust pipe designs. Now depending on which model you go for the Panamera can look slightly different. For instance the hybrid versions have fluorescent on them to signify that they're electrified. The GTS which is supposed to be the sporty one it has black bits on it to make it look meaner. Then there's the turbo at the top of the range with extra chrome bits, chrome around the windows and the biggest wheels. It gets 21 inches. Oh yeah. Here on the inside, the changes are also pretty minimal. You've got a new steering wheel design, some new trim inlays and a second choice of clock for the sports chrono other than this one. Apparently the other one is easier to see, though I don't think that any Porsche owners ever look at their sports chrono clock. Porsche has also updated the infotainment system. They've now fitted it with wireless Apple CarPlay, but there's still no Android Auto. I mean, come on, Porsche. If BMW can offer it, it's about time you do too. The infotainment system is the same as before other than that. So it's all right, it's fairly easy to use, but it's not the best system. I do prefer the very latest systems from both BMW and Mercedes. Another change that is fitted to this car is this. The USBs are now all USB-C and you can get the car with wireless charging, yay. The last thing that they've done is improve the voice commands on the car though. I've tried them out and they're still not great. Other than that, it's pretty much like the old Panamera. You've got the same dials as before where the tachometer is analog, whereas the rest of the screens are all digital and you can just cycle through different things depending on what you want to look at. The design is really nice and sporty. The build quality is impeccable. The driving position is really low and sporty yet again the seats are comfy multi-adjustable and there's plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel and of course electric it's slower but somehow better in terms of in-car storage you have two cup holders here and the door bins can hold a big bottle which is good i'm happy about that i'm also happy about the fact that porsche still keeps the climate control separate to the infotainment system so you can just toggle these knobs here to get the temperature just as you like it rather than have to do it all through a screen like you do on audis here in the back the only updates are hidden away under here usb-c yet again and there's three of them which is handy. While I'm here, actually check out the cup holders. I like the way you can alter the height of this. If you've got a taller cup, it won't topple over. It's nice, isn't it? So it's also nice, the space we've got back here. Look, loads of knee room, plenty of headroom. It's really, really roomy and very comfortable. If you need to carry three people at once in the back, you can pay an extra 600 pounds for a three-seater bench, but then it means that you couldn't upgrade to the seats I've got here, which are the eight-way electrically adjustable seats for added comfort and showing off NUS. They also come with a massage function, so you can operate that through this screen here, and you can do things like heat them and cool them as well. Also, you've got the controls for the blinds, for the sunroof, which is handy. I just wish they managed to do a one-piece glass roof rather than this split one. It would just be a little bit nicer. I can also control my blind for the rear window and the one for the side windows there as well if you want to stop prying eyes looking in at you. One last thing to note is this. If you fold this down here, you have through loading for your skis. If you're heading off to the Alps. And then there's this. Underneath the armrest, you have some more storage. And then there's some door bins, which are an all right size down there. There's also expensive feeling airplane style pockets on the back of the front seat. I mean, that was like a gun going off. One last thing to tell you, when it comes to fitting a child seat in the back of this car, it's actually pretty easy because it's just so huge. For the really big rear facing seats, you might just have to move the front passenger seat forward a little bit, but it's no hardship for the person in the front. 
All Panameras get an electrically operated tailgate, but of course they do. They also have a bit of a load lip to lift stuff over. Other than that though, the boot is really good. Capacity is 495 litres, which means that you can fit seven of these in there underneath the load cover, though it does mean that the load cover is slightly bulging. An Audi A7 by comparison is even better. You can fit eight of these carry-on suitcases underneath the load cover. Let me just show you some other features of the boot. There's nettage here, nettage there, tie down points here. There's a 12 volt socket there. There's these rails that I think you can put things on and slide around. Also, you can fold down the rear seats. I'm gonna have to get in to do this. It's so far away, because there's no releases in the boot. Oh, there we go. And when you do fold it down, there is a completely flat load bed. I could go to sleep now. You get different suspension depending on which Panamera you go for. So the entry level Panamera and Ford have steel springs with adaptive dampers. The GTS, Turbo and Hybrid models get air suspension with adaptive dampers. The Turbo adds into that active anti-roll bars and the GTS is actually lowered to make it more sporty to drive. Then there's the brakes. The GTS gets upgraded sportier brakes and the Turbo has carbon ceramics as standard. Let's talk about engines. So the range kicks off with a 2.9 litre twin turbo V6, which goes into the Panamera and the Panamera 4. That engine is then mated to an electric motor for the 4SE hybrid and combined, you then have 560 horsepower. Then there's a twin turbo four litre V8, which goes into the GTS where it has 480 horsepower. Though in this turbo S model, it's tuned up to 630 horsepower. Now all Panameras are all wheel drive apart from the entry level car, but they all do get an eight speed automatic as standard. There is one thing I need to point out to you, and that's the fact that this is the top of the range Panamera, yet with 630 horsepower, it's actually less powerful than the old top of the range Panamera, which was the Turbo S E hybrid. That had 671 horsepower. And it brings me on to five annoying things about this car. Depending on where the sun is, the sports chrono clock really reflects badly in the windscreen and it's distracting. So you definitely don't want the one that's even easier to see. Well, I like the Panamera shaped key. I hate the way that Porsche have this paddle to start the car. It sort of mimics the back end of the key, but it's ridiculous. Why don't they just have a starter button like everybody else? If you go for the turbo version of this car, you actually have 28 litres less boot space. Do you know the reason for that? Let me know in the comments below. If you go for the hybrid, then you actually lose 92 litres. And I know the reason for that, it's because of all the electrical gubbins which is kept under here. A huge luxury car such as this is designed to cover long distances. Yet bizarrely, you can't get the Panamera with a diesel engine like you can with its key competitors. Adaptive cruise control, which can accelerate and brake to keep you a safe distance from the car in front and automatically steer to keep you in lane, is something that you get a standard on a Toyota Yaris. Yet on this £138,000 Porsche, it's a £2,108 option. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. These Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres have been specifically developed for this car and they mean that it can do 196 miles an hour without worrying about having a blowout. The optional Matrix LED headlights can not only blank out parts of their beams so they don't dazzle oncoming drivers, they can tell if the light is reflecting off road signs and then will reduce the beam so it doesn't dazzle other drivers as well. Are you the kind of person that has Spotify free with its lower definition sound? Well, then you might like the upgraded Burmester sound system because it can enhance the sound to make it sound as good as Spotify premium. Though this does cost £4,000, which is a lot more than it would cost to just go for a Spotify premium in the first place. Anyway, still clever. The car uses satellite navigation data and some other sensors to tell when you're approaching a junction or going downhill. And what it'll do is actually cut the engine to help save fuel and you'll just coast along and then it'll engage again when you need some power. The Porsche Panamera Turbo S is the quickest executive class car round the Nürburgring. It did a time of seven minutes and 29 seconds. We're not doing this again, are we? <laughs> Let's see how quick this Turbo S is from 0 to 60. I've got my specialist timing gear here, car in its sportiest setting. Let's do this. Launch control active. 
Boom. Oh, 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 that's nuts. 0 to 16, 3.38 seconds. That'll do the job. Anyway, let's do something a bit more sensible. Let's see what this Panamera is like to drive in town. So the first thing I'm noticing, even when I'm crawling along at slower speeds, is the fact that the suspension feels pretty firm. This one's fitted with air suspension, but there's a hard edge to it. Feel the bumps through your bum. Another thing is the sheer size of it. <laughs> it's a wide car and you sit quite low, which means it's hard to judge where the corners are. Sometimes you take a wider berth than you need to. I'm not being helped by the fact that this is a left-hand drive car and I'm driving in the UK on the left-hand side. It's not ideal. Let's try the old parking situation. Am I even gonna fit in there? No chance. This is gonna be your problem with this. I can fit in here. <laughs> just because there's no one in front of me, I'm just gonna do it anyway. Visibility is not good. Ah, I've got surround view cameras. That's gonna help me. <laughs> Should have just used that. It is quite a wide old thing, this. Probably spilling out of the parking space just by my sheer width. Just about think I fit in the space. I think we'll leave that there. Well, that's a surprise, a van waiting. Thank you. Ah, it was driven by a woman, that's why. If it had been a bloke, that wouldn't have happened. Not that I'm stereotyping blokes as being bad drivers, but here we go. Look, here's a bloke in the van. Is he going to wait or is he going to get crossed? Look, no, he's not going to wait, is he? Always oh, getting crossed, in he? Oh, my. I'm getting a lot of grief from other drivers about this car because it's so wide. It's made worse by the fact that... Ah! Ah! That was so scary. Being left-hand drive, I can't quite position it correctly on the road. I'm just not used to it. And I'm worried that if I get so close to the verge, I'll end up actually in the verge. So I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, or a car and a hard place. And my head. And my head. Just got a massive stone chip in the windscreen. British roads are just crap. This Panamera is most at home on the motorway. The engine is just barely ticking over. You can enjoy the opulence of the cabin. It's really, really nice in here, just cruising along, chilling out. And as you go faster, the suspension seems better. You can tell this car is set up for the German Autobahn. You could cruise at like 150 mile an hour or more, and it wouldn't even flinch. It's also great at overtaking, so when you've got a slow moving car in front, floor the accelerator, Whoa, off we go. And I just have to back off because I'm in Britain. Speed limit 70. And I went up to that very, very quickly. Good thing is this gearbox knows exactly which gear to pick and when. It's just on point. If I have one complaint, it's that you do get quite a bit of noise from the big tires the faster you go. I do think that a BMW 8 Series Grand Coupe is a little bit quieter to travel in. In fact, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car. Finally, let's see what this big porker is like on a twisty road. Before I do, I'm gonna turn this knob and put it into sports mode, which sharpens up the suspension even more so, and the steering and the throttle response. I'm gonna put the gearbox into manual mode, change gears myself. Yep, <laughs> they're responsive. It grips really well. It doesn't lean at all in the bends. This one's actually got the anti-roll compensation, so it just stays flat through the turns. It's got so much grip. It really, really has. It'll just fly around the bends. It is super capable. You've got the big, faster, sweeping bends. This thing will just hold on and go far quicker than really you should ever go. There is one last thing for me to tell you about this car, and that is the economy. So I'm averaging 20 miles per gallon. I wasn't expecting much to tell you the truth. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Porsche Panamera? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Panamera. It's not perfect and it is rather expensive, but it's a really nice luxury limousine that's also half sports car. I found the thing that's caused that stone chip was this. 
this thing didn't hit it very hard, but it's so large and it's flint, so it's really sharp. That's why it cracked it. Sorry, Porsche. 